Welcome to V-Trum Tips. In this video I will show you how to build the ultimate electronic kick drum with the most realistic playing feel. Recently I got the chance to play the Roland KD220, the KD180 and also a modified 22 inch kick drum with an KD22A adapter attached. I tested countless other trigger solutions in the past, but none of them could provide such a decent playing feel. Those three Roland kick drum solutions are definitely in the top league. However, the KD220 comes at the price point of 1500 euro, while the cheaper KD180 comes for only 1200 euro. The only affordable option of the three is the kick drum converter for 330 euro combined with an acoustic kick drum. This is still kind of expensive, even if you get a cheap kick drum like this Pearl Export 22 for only 250 euro. I also heard some rumors about the KD22A being limited. I do not like this pressure, neither do I want to be limited to a 22 inch kick drum. 22 inch is too big for most apartment e-drum sets and 18 inch is a little bit small. I also prefer the look of a white kick drum head, while the Roland kick drums do only come with a black cover. Yes, I know, I could spray paint the covers, but I need another reason to justify my experiment, which is to build my own version of the Roland kick drum adapter at the size of 20 inch. The Roland KT22A adapter is nothing but an acoustic drum head with an integrated trigger and a cover plate to keep the noise low. These kick drums have such a great rebound because of the moving air between the two drum heads. I studied Roland's design and figured the kick pad of those pads is identical to the Roland KD9 and KD10 cloth surface. It is essentially the same part. Therefore I will slaughter the second hand KD9. But don't worry, this surgery is reversible. I guess. I measured the diameter to come up with the right measures for the other parts. Removing the cloth part from the pad is tricky, but can be done without destroying anything. I shoved a small screwdriver in between and rolled it to separate the pad from the sticky tape. The KD9 cloth trigger is actually very thick and cannot just be applied on top of an acoustic hat. It has to be synced in. Roland used the white plastic rim of the PDX6 pad as a spacer and basically applied a metal disc as a bottom part. The drum head has a hole and holds this unit with 5 screws and big washers. The KD9 cloth pad is placed inside the cup-like structure. I changed the design a bit. The bottom disc gets a 50mm hole for the cable of the piezo. And I will not use 5 washers, but a ring on top of the drum head, which is a much more reliable design. I basically need a lightweight spacer ring with an inner diameter that is slightly bigger than the KD9 cloth pad. The aim of this design is to make it as lightweight as possible. The lighter it is, the more of a realistic playing feel we'll get. The metal components were made by a company called Lasermaster from the UK. They offer all kinds of metal cutting services and have a simple online configuration tool. I decided to go with 2mm aluminium for both rings. Aluminium is very lightweight and easy to walk with. Finding a PDX6 like spacer ring was not easy, so I decided to ask a CNC company to make such a ring for me. They would have been able to make this piece out of either wood or plastic for around 25 euro. Way too expensive. I wish I had the 3D printer, then I could just print one. A friend of mine is very good with woodwork. I sent him the measures and he made the requested ring out of plywood. This is a masterpiece and I would have never been able to cut the wood so well. He painted it white so it does look like the Roland part. The ring is incredibly lightweight, the parts fit perfectly together. We also need this giant cover plate for the front of the bass drum. Same problem here. CNC cutting is way too expensive. So I got my friend Peter to cut it out of 9mm plywood and he painted it white as well. My trigger construction will be held together by 6 screws instead of 5. Because have you ever divided 360 by 5? Right, way too complicated. I drew the spots for the hole on the craft paper. I attached my template to the metal and drilled the 4mm holes with a drill press. Why do you have a drill press in your apartment, you ask? Very good question, I can explain. I know a guy that knows a guy who has a wheel of a Boeing 737 as a couch table. Because he likes planes. Who's the weird one now? The guy with the airplane wheel in his living room or me with a very common drill press in my closet? I clamped the parts together to match the holes, else I cannot assemble it later. The parts do also get marked. 
as I am not able to walk as accurate as a machine. They only fit together in this one single way. The wooden ring gets the same 4mm holes. The screws I need have a countersunk head for an obvious reason. The top ring surface needs to be even. Aluminium is very easy to work with. The screws require me to sink the holes of the top ring. I simply use a countersink for this. This is by the way the reason why I chose 2mm aluminium. It is thick enough for those little M4 screw heads. This would not work with a 1mm ring. The top part of the white ring and the bottom part of the top ring get a layer of double sided adhesive tape. This is necessary to prevent the ring from leaving its chosen place on the drum head. I'm using a brand new Remo head because I could not find any decent second hand kick drum head. I am so sorry for those who hate e-drums because I will cut this brand new drum head in a second for an experiment. Enjoy e-drum haters! <laughs> By the way, I determined the position of the trigger sensor beforehand. The place has to be at the right height for 22 inch bass drum. The front cover helps to find the right position. I mark the spot and stick the top ring on top of the head. The head has to be tensioned by the way. The spacer is attached as well, so the sticky tape of both components prevents the drum head from ripping. Hopefully. We all know that cutting an acoustic head is tricky as they rip very quickly. The only safe way to cut them is heat. The first two holes get burned into the head with a soldering iron. And the holes get enlarged with a 4mm drill. I inserted the first two screws and applied the bottom plate and the nuts. The tricky part is over. Now on to melting the other holes. I screw everything together and here comes the first big mistake. Aluminium and wood are soft materials, but I treated them like steel and tightened them too much. The consequence is a slightly deformed top ring. The drum head is clamped between the two rings. Whatever I do, I cannot rip it apart. So I just use a sharp knife to cut out the ring. Let's see if it fits and it does. The kick pad is slightly smaller than the ring, which is necessary as it moves and would rub against the ring otherwise. The trigger needs to be lifted slightly. So you might ask, why did I not make this white ring thinner? Because I need to be able to adjust the height of the trigger pad according to the cover plate. Therefore it is better to have a thick ring to be able to lift the trigger plate afterwards. I'm using those foam rubber sticky dots as spacers and to attach the trigger. Here comes the first test and it is almost at the same height level. The cable gets attached to the plate with a cable plastic clamp. This is why I drilled this additional hole by the way. I'm using this regular check plug and solder the two cables. The four cables are connected via screw terminal which is applied with hot glue. This is one thing I like about my design. The connector is not integrated into the front plate, like on the Roland kick drum adapter. The branding is the most important step. Okay, to be honest. I simply have too many of those stickers and I'm desperately searching for spots where I can apply them. I did a lot of experiments with the front plate, applied and removed expensive foam tape just to find out that my ideas regarding keeping the plate in place do not work. How should I apply this plate to the front of the kick drum? I asked that question on Facebook and one genius guy came up with the idea to use velcro stripes. Thanks for that, by the way. So I attached the velcro to the plate. The counterpart is just applied to the bass drum head on 6 spots. The plate has still some foam tape applied to close the gap between the cover plate and the drum hoop. Using velcro is a genius idea. It keeps the plate in place and it is still possible to remove it easily. The resonant drum head needs to be dampened as well. I did not want to put something sticky onto it, since I would like to be able to reuse this drum head. So I attached some foam dampeners from our drums, with some screws and metal anchors to dampen the head, with the result of still having a very noisy bass drum. The playing feel is great though. Okay, maybe it helps to move the foam closer towards the center. No, not really. It is still very loud. To remove the plate, I simply push the sensor down. 
By the way, the genius part about this construction is that we can rotate the head in order to have the trigger surface at the right spot for the drum beaters. Roland's kick drum adapter can do that too, so it's not my idea. I removed the foam of the cover plate, the noise was amplified and now I stick the foam in between. Again, it is all just experimenting with trial and error. Look how the trigger faces both beaters. It looks just great. The height of the trigger is at the exact same level as the cover plate and the gap between kick surface and plate is big enough to allow some movement. Ok, let's select the Roland KT9 as a trigger type in the module and finally play this beast. The triggering is obviously great and the playing feel is just amazing. Look how the beater sinks in with the surface. It really has the acoustic playing feel. Let's compare the noise with the Roland KT140. The KT140 is already a noisy kick pad, but my converted kick drum is still much louder. My kick pad experiment went well. I was able to copy Roland's kick drum idea on a relatively low budget. However, I cannot use this bass drum because I live in an apartment. I also have to say that the playing field of the 22 inch Roland kick drum is a bit better. In the end, it is all about the amount of air that moves in between the two drum heads. And my small 22 by 8 inch shell does simply not have enough volume. In terms of noise, I would also say that the Roland KT220 and the regular kick drum with a Roland adapter are still a bit quieter. But it does also depend on the chosen drum shell in terms of the adapter. The KD-180 was not so quiet and in my opinion already too noisy for most apartments. My kick drum might be even louder than the KD-180. Reason for this could be the material of the front plate or the drum head type such as the resonant head. All those factors contribute to the result and obviously a DIY solution cannot reach the level of a professional product. But overall the noise difference is not too big. I could still not use any of the three Roland solutions in an apartment, even if they are a bit quieter than my kick drum. But if you have your own house or your own rehearsal room, you should consider one of the four solutions. And please do not bother with DIY if you do not have the time. My experiment is not cheap. It makes more sense to just buy the KT22A adapter, in most cases. This is only something for people who like building things and can improvise. This entire kick drum construction would have been cheaper and easier to build if I would not have used the KD9 cloth pad. The cloth piece is just a foam attached to a metal disc with a 35mm piezo on the back. Foam companies cut such pieces for a few bucks. The problem is finding the right foam and the material to protect the foam surface. Also the expensive and complicated wooden ring is not necessary if you have a custom foam at a different size. I could have used this speaker ring from Amazon, which costs only 6 euro, and a smaller disc at the back without a hole. Cutting the hole into the disc makes the part very expensive. The piezo could have been attached to the back. So you can learn from my mistakes and build such a kick drum for less than 100 euro. I'm even thinking of ordering a foam cylinder and replacing the KD9 surface with it. Just to see if I can get the building costs down. I'm still very happy about the result of my experiment. Because it shows that you can transform your old KD9 into a solid electronic kick drum that feels better than most e-kick drums on the market. There's only one specific electronic bass drum that might be better or at least at the same level as the Roland KT220. I'm talking about the drum tech kick drums. They seem to provide a realistic playing feel while being silent at the same time. I have not played them yet, but from what I've read online, they might be an equally good solution. Thanks for watching my experiment. Find the links for all products mentioned in the video description. That's it for today. Keep on drumming and see you next time.